Okay, so I got a, had a question on uh, feeling the feelings and what do you do if there's more than one feeling that arises um, at a time. So one of the exercises I do in the group I call feel the feelings. Um, you know, and that is the thing, one of the ego's main mechanisms is to use activities to repress feelings. So like it could be food addiction, it could be drug addiction, it could be alcohol addiction, it could be you know, things to do with sex or love, various addictions that go out there, codependency, all of these things repress, repress feelings, the, the emotions, the energies within the ego, and th that builds up and creates an inflated ego. So I talk about in feeling the feelings, not allowing the thoughts to identify or make a story about what's going on, but just to allow all those latent energies or feelings or emotions to come up and not avoid them, to release you know, these things which, uh, which end up manifesting in things like depression, overeating, uh, physical illnesses manifesting, don't mentalize or mentally label, just let all of these energies come up as a process which we do in the group. So that's the question, what do you do if there's two different feelings coming up or multiple feelings coming up at the same time? And for me, remember, when you're doing feel the feelings, Every time a thought arises to make a story about the feeling, you disidentify, you release from it. So, you know, the, the, the ego wants to make a story. Oh, there's, let's say, for example, I've got a, a knot in my stomach mm -hmm. and, um, and a headache at the same time. So those would be like two things. How do you do feel the feelings? Well, first of all, you're not supposed to be labeling. So as, as soon as the ego wants to make a story about which one do I feel first, just let that go. That's a thought. Okay. And so... Ultimately, what happens is um, you just let, if you're not going to make a mental decision about it or try and make a story about it or let the thinking decide what's happening, then it will, I, I, I call it intuitively, one will usually uh, be, because in, when you think, there's like a separate I that's trying to decide what's going on when you're thinking. It's like, oh, how, you know, a lot of people do it like, that they still allow the, the I or the un subconscious I to try and orchestrate the process to do it perfectly. But you don't want to do that. Let even that go. There is no thinking to try and do the feel the feelings perfectly. But then intuitively, um, what will happen is usually, uh, usually the feeling which is most dominant usually gets to be experienced mostly first. And then the other one is, you know, so usually if I've got a few things going on, usually one is the loudest and that will be released first. And then at a certain point, another one may become loud and then that starts to start to be released. And then eventually, you know, like when I used to have gout attacks, you know, there'd be this horrific pain in my feet and I'd let the mentalization go. And then this would start to dissolve and become more and more infinite. And then I'd go off into a state of bliss, but that would take four hours. Mm. from horrific pain in my feet to just being with it, not mentalizing, then it would become more non-local and more diffuse and then more like a throb. And then even the throb would, would dissolve and then I'd go into bliss. But that was like a four-hour process of horrific pain in feet mm. to just non-local peace and, and bliss. So through that, as you do that, the, so sometimes you'll get several things going on and you just like on a certain level, you could say it doesn't really matter. You just feel, you, as you keep feeling one thing out, the next thing becomes more present. You feel that, that's felt out, the next thing. And then if you've got enough time, you feel everything out until there's nothing left to feel and you're in an infinite state. Um, remember, it's not really about the ego, but you can, as a kind of a tool, allow something to be felt out first. So it's almost like there's a director, and that, that's okay as well. Like, let's say if... Um, for practical purposes, if I had, um, if I had like breathlessness and a headache at the same time, but I had to go to work, you know, later on in the day, and I know that it's more important for me to release the headache than the breathlessness, then you can actually, you know, I have done it in that way, whereby actually I'll, I'll want to be actively feeling out the headache and not the breathlessness because that will a allow me to function more. So you, you can also like have a, a level of, even though perfectly, you wouldn't direct, you just let intuitively uh, let things unfold in whatever divine order. But you can use it on a practical purpose. 
like uh, you can just act almost actively feel a thing out without feeling something else it's almost like you know but ultimately we're trying to get away from that but it can be used as a tool just to release things so it, it's a it's a good question but ultimately if you feel everything out if you just go off into a state of peace non-local peace and bliss does, does that answer the question that's great that's great it, it, it and it became really clear really clear that I every time I use anything food or whatever I cannot access those feelings uh, that mm. easy I cannot I'm suppressing like you say the ego on something gets it and and so I've, I've tried to feel the feelings after like I had a meal that was a little bit too full it was much much di more difficult to get mm. in touch with those feelings so it became so transparent that that's exactly what happens. I'm suppressing feelings every time I, you know, I eat or I do any other stuff that you're saying. I, you know, I indulge in any sex addiction or whatever. Um, but yeah, but what once the the pain was too strong, there wasn't even thinking, and it's and it was it was difficult. It was actually a really amazing experience. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. And you know, it's even, you know, the thing is, like, if you do something, that's a great thing. If you do something like, you know, you act, act out on an addiction, like you just eat, like, a, a chocolate cake and a bag of donuts, you know, to, to numb out from life, um, then um, it's true. It feels more difficult to access the feelings that one was accessing, the, the stream. It becomes more numb and you feel more numbed out to life and more blocked out and more frozen. But really, feel the feelings can also be used on that as well. So, you know, one of the things is like, you know, like I, I go to these 12 step groups where I meet addicts all the time and a lot of them are frozen or numbed out. They can't even access anything. But actually, they can. You, you just have to do feel the feelings on the numbness and the frozenness. So they might have to just sit with this feeling of being frozen, numbed out, or dissociated for a period of time and just be one with that. Okay. And then this layer of dissociation or numbness or um, not being able to access anything, you fill that out and that's the first layer that's felt out and then you get more into the more fluid emotions and energies and vibrations later on. So you see you've taken a step back by going into numbness or dissociation, but you can also you learn to just feel that out, because feel that, you can feel everything out until you're back into the infinite. So sometimes, you know, someone can say, I'm feeling frozen or I can't access, well, feel your frozenness out, feel your numbness out, or feel out your dissociation. So, and then that will take the first layer and then you'll get up into to deeper stuff afterwards uh, with that. And then, um, okay. <clears throat>